Thank you, Jerry. Playing there. Good song. I must tell Jesus. How often do you feel like that? That you must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus. You know, if we... Uh, if when, when we get to feeling like that we can handle things or that we, we depend on somebody else, we depend on ourselves, uh, God will put us in situations where there is no other help, there is no other hope. And um, to try to get us to that place right there of that song, I must tell you, I must. I mean, I, I could tell my wife, but she'll be sympathetic, but she can't help. I could tell, you know, I could tell the pastor and the pastor is going to listen, uh, you know, and be sensitive and empathetic and, you know, but this is a problem that the pastor can't help. I mean, we can pray for each other, you know, but how often do we get to that place where it's like, I have got to tell him because there's nobody else that can, that can do what Jesus can do. Okay. Um, unplug. <clears throat> okay. Who's that? Is that Mike back there? <laughs> Remember that time my one watch went off on me? I was preaching on a Sunday night and I did one of these motions like this or something, and my and that was and that activated my watch. And, and, and she said that wasn't very nice. It's creepy. It's a part of technology I don't like. Anyway, unplugged is gonna be, it will be, it will begin. Easter Sunday, so Sunday night of Easter Sunday, whatever date that is, um, 13th or 17th, something like that. So, um, so plan, please plan on joining us. It was a great time. I don't know about you, but those of you that joined in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, the churches that gathered together back in November and joined in that time of prayer, um, just they called it a prayer revival. We'll be doing the same thing that we did here last year, and we'll be doing it in April, unplugged, and we'll be challenging our people to unplug, you know, get off, get off the cell phones, get off the social media, get, turn the TV off for all week. Um, but get unplugged, and, and it's a season of prayer. It's a season of, I must tell Jesus. It's a season of, I've got to have Jesus. And... Um, so, I'm excited about it. I think that those that participated last time, last year, were, were benefited uh, by it greatly. Uh, we had about an hour and a half, oh, maybe not an hour and a half, but about an hour of testimonies following it on a Sunday night. And we'll do the same thing this year. So, uh, please think about that and get it into your schedule and just plan on being a part of it. All right. Okay. I do want to let you know the WMF is sending $500 to um, Ron Minton for him to use uh, for the, his people, the Ukrainians, where his ministry is. And, uh, and he knows how to take that money and get it right to them you know, be better than we ever could. So um, he reached out to us and WMF ladies uh, agreed. I said, I'd like to do something. And they got together and, and Dolores and Jerry and uh, Shirley, Shirley Murray, and they got together and recommended $7,500. And I said, that's what I had in mind. So that's going out. I just want you to know what we're doing. I don't want you to think that our church is just, you know, not taking any kind of action um, because we are. And uh, so, and that's money well spent there. And then also the Mintons will be here on the 4th, the 3rd or the 4th, the 4th of April. And uh, Ron and Nancy. And boy, I'll be glad, I'll be anxious to hear not that there were no, we always want to hear from any missionary, right? I mean, it's all it's all exciting, but theirs is kind of a, it's you know it's 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 on the front page of the world news right now, Ukraine. So it'll be very interesting to hear the reports that he has uh, about it. Okay, we are looking next week. We will be done with uh, the Lord's the Lord's model prayer. I'm going to read it for you. Verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6. After this manner before, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we, for, as we forgive our debtors. And verse 13 is where we are, are going to hit tonight. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I think that's a very interesting... Look, I have... Not always. I was going to say I've always. That's not true. But probably in the last, you know, maybe since I became pastor or maybe, maybe a little before that, every time I would read through this, I would always look at verse 13 and say, and lead us not in temptation. And I would always think to myself, what does that mean? What does that mean? And, and I'm going to, we'll talk about that tonight. Lead, lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's pray again. Father, bless us now, please. Holy Spirit of God, teach us your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Is this a contradiction? We know that the Bible, does the Bible ever contradict itself? Never. Never. Are there, are there, are there scriptures that seem sometimes to be at odds? Yes. Yes, there are. But there's always a good explanation. This, for me, is one of those. This for me is a place that, that the non-believer who wants to get in and, and pick up the Word of God can say, yeah, you see here, the Bible says, lead us not into temptation. So apparently God does lead people into temptation. Not true. Not true. So we're going to look at that tonight, and we're going to understand better what that means. And I will tell you, I spent a lot of time on these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, about 11 words. Uh, and, and I did a lot of checking more than normal, because I'm like, I, and every time I'd read somebody, I would think, well, that doesn't help. I'd read, that doesn't help. You're not helping, you're not helping to bring it home to me. You know, it's not super clear. And um, generally when that happens with a passage, I don't preach it. I, I don't, I just feel like God's not, God's not, you know, given me that to preach anytime soon. But here, it's the next thing on the list. You know, it's, I mean, it's the next thing in the Lord's Prayer. So I felt like we had to address it. And I sat at my office desk, and I prayed, and I read it, and I prayed. And I looked up in the scene, looked out the window, and I would read it again, and I would pray. And then I'd read a commentary, and I'm like, you didn't help. Uh, it's, you know, it's sort of one of those that, you know, it's funny. Funny about commentaries. Often the things that are strange to you and hard, hard, hard scripture, you know, hard, you know, difficult things to understand, you often read a commentary and they blow right past it too. It's like they didn't quite have enough grasp on it to comment on it either. Uh, I didn't find people passing over it. I just found a lot of people saying the same thing, which just didn't quite do it. I mean, it, it just wasn't clear. It was still sort of vague to me. But then I'm, then I'm now I'm walking around my office. I'm just telling you how these things go. You know, I, now I'm walking around my office and just looking and thinking and thinking and asking the Holy Spirit to just bring it, bring it home to me. I mean, bring it home to me. And then, then, I, then I, it, uh, it got clear. It got really clear. And this is after a long time. It got clear. Now, I'm, and I hope to make what's in here to give that to you in a clear way tonight also. But understand this. Have faith that God's Word never contradicts itself. Ever. It is infallible. It is perfect and infallible, and it never contradicts itself in truth. You know, the, God's not going to say, well, this is a truth, and they come over here and say, and this is a truth, and they are opposites. They're opposites. That doesn't happen. Okay, stay focused, stay on target. First statement here, God can, can God question, can God tempt someone to sin? No, he cannot. We talked about this in James, in James uh, chapter 1, back when we were in a study of James. Listen to this, blessed is the man that endureth temptation... For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Okay? Neither tempteth he any man. 
But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So, very clear scripture. God can, not only does not, He cannot tempt you with evil. Now, so, so now, now you've got to make these dovetail. You know, that verse in James, and then this verse here. So, because it sounds like when, when Jesus is saying, now pray to God that lead me not into temptation. It sounds like that God can do that. Okay, but that's not true. What Jesus said, okay, then you may say, well, what about when Jesus was led of the Spirit in Matthew chapter 4, I think, or 3, and he was led of the Spirit out into the wilderness to be what? Tempted of who? Satan. Okay, but here again, it didn't say that God tempted him. It said that Satan tempted him. It said that God led him out there, but God did not do the tempting. You follow me? And that's not a play on words. I mean, that's, that's exactly the way that it was. And we'll talk a little bit more about that and help you understand that. God can provide... Okay, often... I don't have a coin on me. Often God leads us... Um, he, often God puts... Test our faith, but trials and suffering and hardship, He tests our faith. Now, God, God can do that, and God often does that, but He never tempts us. But here's the thing. Satan will often piggyback on that trial of your faith, and he will tempt you. In other words... Say that financially, somebody uh, you know is suffering a financial setback, okay, um, and 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 so the next time they get in that checkbook to write, how many of you still write checks? <laughs> yes, okay. So for everybody else out there, next time you get on that internet online giving and click that button to give, you look. There may come a whisper in your ear that says. You can't afford to tithe. Not this week. God will understand. That's the temptation. And that's either Satan speaking, okay, or, or, or you know. Re truth of the matter is, it's our own nature whispering to us, you can't afford to. God will get it. You've, you've never missed tithing, but you can't afford to right now. And I always say to that, look, we, it's, it's not that you can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. But anyway, so God did not tempt you. He brought a trial into your life, and Satan is the one that tempted. Your own, James chapter 1, we are drawn away of our own lust. Our own weak nature is the one that tempted us and whispered in our ear. That wasn't God. God does not tempt you. God doesn't say, hey, how about not writing that check this week? And then, okay, let's see what he does. That's not God at all. God may put you through a trial or a testing or a time of suffering to try your faith. Satan is the one that piggybacks that testing and then tempts you. Or, or, or just your own nature, our own sinful nature is what tempts us. But it's not God. It's not God. God, God is testing and then Satan takes the opportunity to tempt us. With God being incapable of tempting us, I believe that Jesus is saying here that we should reveal our, our true heart to God in not wanting to be exposed to temptation for the fear of failure. Now here's where I, I, I type this stuff out and I'm going to try to really bring it home for you. In the previous verse... Um, Jesus says that we should confess our sins, forgive us our debts, right? Confess. We should confess our sins to God. And then, uh, uh, and then you know, we're supposed to forgive everybody else their debts to us. And God is saying, now, yeah, I'll forgive your sins and we can be right as long as you are practicing the same mercy to those people around you. I believe that this verse here, verse 13, is joined right behind it. I think that, 
I, I think that failure, I think that Jesus is saying, of course, not for himself because he never failed. But I think Jesus is saying, now look, you need to stay right with God, which means you need to go to God and confess your sin. And by the way, you also need to practice the same mercy that you're asking God for in verse 12. And right behind that, I think that Jesus says, why don't we just cut the head off the snake before it turns to sin and before it turns to an, uh, something for which we have to confess by pleading with God and saying, don't lead me into temptation. Now, He doesn't lead us there, but as I said, He can do things. God can do things to challenge us in our lives, and then the devil will then tempt us in that same arena. God, God, God's not tempting us. He can't. But often when God's trying to do a work in our lives, Satan comes along and tempts us and says what he's doing is not right. And that's, 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 that's not, you know, that, that's unreasonable. It's unreasonable for you to accept that. Satan is the one that tempts us. And I believe that the truth here is that Jesus is saying, listen, let me say this. I hate losing I hate it. I, not as much as I did, used to. Uh, but I hate losing more than I like winning. And, and I don't know if you can grasp that. Winning is great. I love it. Celebration, great. Love to win. Win, yeah, amen. But, but losing stays with me longer. I hate it. So, so if, 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 if winning affects me this much... Losing affects me this much. And I think that that's what God is looking for in this verse. I think He's looking for people that say, look, I, I, look, I know that there's going to be times that you've got to, that you have to bring trial and suffering to my life. I know there's times where there's no other way for me to grow than for you to pick at me, you know, make me uncomfortable. But what I'm saying is, I, I, look, I will seek your face. I, you don't have to lead me into the presence of temptation. You follow me? He doesn't tempt you, but often God brings us in. in uh, uh, okay, what, what happened to Joseph? Joseph was in Potiphar's house. What happened to him regarding Potiphar's wife? She tempted him, right? Was there any doubt, is there any doubt when you read that story that, 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 that Joseph found a place and he was in command of Potiphar's house, is there any doubt that, that even that blessing was of God? We know that was all part of God moving him around through Egypt. And we know that Joseph had become, worked himself up and had become a very trusted servant, his top servant, Potiphar's top servant. But we know that Joseph had to go back to jail. Because if he doesn't go to jail, he never has the opportunity to interpret the king's dreams, right? For the butler and the uh, baker and the butler. And that's the way that he comes out of jail and becomes second in command. I just painted a real quick story there. So, God put him in a position... God put him in a position where he knew he was going to be tempted, but God didn't tempt him. Does that make sense? God did not tempt him. God just put him in a position where he knew Satan and his minions will do it for me. They'll tempt him. And Joseph, though, passed. He passed. He fled, right? He said, no, I'm not. No, no. And he ran out of the house, got blamed for it anyway, and was thrown in jail. What I'm saying, is, and that, and, but that, in that case, that's what needed to happen, was that that temptation needed to come. He was going to, he was going to have victory over it. She was going to lie about him anyway, and he was going to jail anyway. The point is, is that when the Spirit led, took Christ and led him into the desert to be tempted, God put, God put His only Son, He led him out into the desert to be tempted. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm looking for your heads to rattle. So God, 
God can and God does bring us into the presence of temptation, but He does not tempt us. God does not tempt us. You can never say, that was unfair. And God says, I didn't do that. Now, of course, God's got a big plan. He's working. But I think the point here is that Jesus is saying, listen, there are times that maybe God has to, has to bring you to a point of temptation, into the presence of temptation, and then he backs out because he doesn't tempt anybody. But I think Jesus is saying that we can avoid that by praying to God and say, don't lead me. The, the word there into temptation is not, is not translation there. And look, I, I, a lot of different translations say the exact same thing. It's just kind of a going from Greek to English. It's a tough spot because it really doesn't mean the way that we think that it means. Like, uh, so, but, but, but that's not really the point here. The point here is that Jesus is saying, you can go to God and say, God, don't bring me into the presence of temptation today. I'll do, look, you don't need to do that with me. I will humble myself. I will trash my pride. I will, do, I will do the best that I can through your spirit to destroy my arrogance. You don't need to bring me into that presence. Jesus says it's okay to pray that. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed to, prayed to his Father, let this cup pass from me Nevertheless, thy will be done. That's a really good illustration of this. Jesus is saying, I believe that he thought he was going to die right then because he was so, he was sweating drops of blood. And I believe that he felt like, I think I'm getting, the, the demonic oppression was just bearing down on him, unlike any time in history, to keep him from going. And I believe that he, I believe he's saying, I think I'm going to die. Uh, okay, so let, hey, I don't want, I came to the earth to go to the cross. Uh, so let this cup pass from me. But your will be done. I think that's what he's, uh, Jesus is teaching us to pray here. Pray to God and go ahead and pray to God and say, look, if you don't, look, if, you know, if it is not exactly totally needful today for me to be brought into the presence of temptation, I don't want to face temptation today. That's my point. And I think sometimes that we, according to this verse, can pray ourselves out of some temptation that God will say, okay, I love your heart. I love your heart. I love the fact that you don't even want to be tempted today. But you know what? Because that is not always our disposition. Many times we flirt with sin. Many times we walk right up to the edge. I haven't crossed. <laughs> I haven't stepped over the line. And this verse is not about that at all. It's the exact opposite. It is like staying so... It's like, God, don't even lead me into temptation because I'm afraid I'll fail. I, and I hate failing. So don't even bring me into temptation. Just don't even tempt me to... Look, God, I mean, if it's needful, nevertheless, thy will be done. But I think that we... According to this verse, when we have this heart that says, I don't even want to get close to it. You ever read about people falling into the Grand Canyon? What did they always, what did they always do? They climbed over a fence. Right? Every time I read it, I'm like, I mean, I feel sorry for you, but I'm like, you crawled over a fence. What in the world are you thinking? You got out there and slipped and fell into the Grand Canyon. And I'm not saying I don't have any sympathy for them, because I do. But I'm also like, well, what did you think was going to happen? When you get that close to, to sin, and, and that's the lesson here, is that our heart's desire 
Every day should be like, Lord, I'm going to keep myself away. I'm not going to bring evil things in front of my eyes as much as I can control. And I'm going to, through the power of your spirit, I'm going to control my spirit and, and try not to be offended at people. And Lord, hey, if it's possible, I, I'm all about that. And I don't want to fail you today. So if it, if it would be thy will... Just don't even bring me into the presence of temptation today. And I think that we can avoid some of it by praying that. Because it, do you understand? It shows a heart that says, I don't want to fail you. I don't want to fail you. And if I'm constantly putting myself in temptation, I'm going to fail somewhere. And, 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 and if, I, if I don't care, if I'm one of them thrill seekers, it's always walking right up to the edge and looking at you and like, I didn't cross. Then I think God will say, okay, I, I hesitate to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. There are times when failure hmm. okay, I'm going to say it. Roll with me now. If you don't get it, just don't, be, don't hammer me. Okay, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say it this way. Have you ever failed? Have you ever sinned? Have you ever, you know, and then later you just regretted it so badly? And in the regretting of it so bad, and maybe immediately, or at least later, and the regret and the guilt of it brought you right up to Him. Like, I, I can't tell you how horrible I feel about this. I can't tell you, and please forgive me. And you start listing all the reasons why it was wrong and blah, 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 blah. And the thing brought you right up to Him. Maybe there was a time of distance from God, and God says, I'm going to fix that. I mean, I don't want you to sin, but I'm going to bring you right up to the presence of it. Temptation is going to do its work, and you're going to fail, and you're going to fail horribly, and you're going to run to me. I believe that everything in this world, God uses everything as a pawn to accomplish His will in our life. Everything. And I believe that even with sin... There, look, remember when uh, in the New Testament he tells the church, hey, if a person's in your midst and he won't get right with God at all, deliver him to Satan. Deliver him to Satan and let Satan have his way with him for a while. Satan is a pawn of God. Was crucifying Jesus, was that wrong? We killed, they, they crucified an innocent man, was it wrong? Yes. Was it sinful? Yes. They killed the Son of God. They crucified an innocent man who happened to be the Son of God. But was it the will of God? Yes. So, he used the high priest. He used the people that day. He used the Roman government. Everybody's a pawn. So my point is that he used sin against itself that day. He says, yeah, you're going to be so envious of him, you're going to kill him, and that's, that's exactly what I need to happen. I need somebody that is so envious that they're going to kill my son. All that's wrong, but all of it was in sin on that day. Sin killed itself. Look at us. We're banging him to the, to the cross. Look at us. We're stabbing him. Stabbing him means that they run a spear in this lung, through this lung, through that lung. That's what that stab in the side was. It wasn't like a, uh. No, it was a thrust. And they knew how to do it. And they were good at it. Because that was to kill a man. So on that day, God used sinful man with sinful motives to sinfully kill an innocent, the innocent Son of God. Even sin is a pawn of God. 
If you say, I don't really get that, just, just to think about it. Pray about it. Um, it's, I believe it. There's nothing down here that God doesn't say, I control it all. I control it all. So, but here, here, let me, well, I'm, I'm going to do this. Psalm 19, listen to this, Psalm 19, 13 through 14. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. The psalmist is saying, keep me back from that. I don't want to go, I don't want to go over there. I don't even want to be, get into the presence of temptation because I'll sin. I, I know me, I will sin. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. It's further proof. It, it somewhat corroborates this verse here that we're looking at, which is, pray to God. God doesn't tempt you, but God will sometimes bring us into the presence of a temptation and, 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 and Jesus is saying, it's okay to pray. Don't even do that. You don't need to do that with me. I submit myself this morning. On my knees, I humble myself. The second part of that Psalm 19 is, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. He says, I don't want to be tempted. Because if I'm tempted... Too much. And I know 1 Corinthians teaches us, what is it? 1 Corinthians 10 teaches us that with the temptation, you know, God will not have you be tempted above that ye are able, and with the temptation will bring a way of escape. I know that, and that's true, and that's true. There's always an out. God says there's always, you can win the victory at any given time, you can have the victory over temptation. But the truth is, I mean, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. And, and what Jesus is saying, tell my Father that humble yourself now. And, and there could be a lot of times that He, might, he, that he would bring you into, into the presence of temptation to, to exercise, to, to, to bring about some growth, to maybe even it will, you, He knows you're going to fail because He already knows everything, but in that failure you're going to learn and you're going to grow from that. How about growing? See, this is where I'm struggling. I'm just struggling with this because I don't feel like that I'm transferring what's here to there. A, man, a preacher said one time, he said, I regularly pray to God, you don't have to spank me. If you'll just, if you'll just reveal it to me where I need to grow, where I need to, where I need work, you know, where I need, he says, I, I, I will, I am in. You don't have to you don't have to bring me into situations that, you know, that, 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 that try me with suffering. I think that's a worthy prayer. I think that there are times that the only way to move forward sometimes is through suffering and hardship. That's just the way that it is, because we're hard-headed. And, and if we're going to be like Jesus, we have to suffer. That's clear in the Scripture. We have to partake of his same suffering. I'm just saying that I believe that verse 13 is saying, Jesus is saying, it's okay to pray, God. I humble myself. I, I want to walk righteously. I want to walk in, uh, 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 you know, in your ways and in holy, in, in the way, in holy ways. Um, and if it's just the same to you today, don't. Don't bring me into temptation because I hate failure. I hate failing you. Now, we're not going to get away from all of it. But I do believe that that's what the verse is saying. I believe that Jesus is saying, as he said, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless I will be done. Jesus says, I don't want this. Whatever's happening now, I think I'm dying and I don't want to die. But if the plan changed, okay, thy will be done. Jesus prayed that. And I think it's okay for us to say, God, don't bring me into temptation today. 
God's not going to tempt you, but, he'll, but, but sometimes he can bring you to the point of it, into the presence of it, as he did Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. God clearly led him out there to be tempted of the devil. He can do that to us too. But, but this verse is saying it's okay at the beginning of a day or throughout the day to say, Lord, I don't want to fail you unless it's absolutely necessary. Don't. And then the second part of the verse says what? Deliver me from evil? Now that does actually mean deliver me from the evil one. That's what that means. Deliver me from the evil one. Who's the evil one? Satan. So, I don't think we think about this. You know, I don't, I don't think that we think very much about God, I, I am so about you. And, and I don't want to fail you today. And I'm fearful that if I face too much temptation, I'm going to fail you today. You know, don't, don't bring me in, into the presence. Holy Spirit, remind me uh, 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 of, of things that could be temptations and help me to avoid them today. 